The galactic center is located at 26 degrees Sagittarius. And we are there now, now. In the heart of consciousness, beyond the realm of space and time, the cosmic power of transformation is upon us here in the galactic center. It's a mystical adventure and a better way to live. Finding harmony and balance in a journey to the light that lies within. So let the psychic cruise begin. Release your mind, unwind the time. Welcome to the Galactic Center. Center. Hi there, I'm Safrina. The word yoga comes from the Sanskrit root yug, which means to yoke or to join as in union with spirit. There are many different forms of yoga. The karma yoga, which is action yoga. The bhakti yoga of devotion. And hatha yoga, which is a very physical form of yoga. We now take you to the Jiva Mukti Center in New York City for some bhakti and some hatha. It's a great workout and it's all coming up next. Center is located in a divinely inspired floor through Soho loft. In addition to yoga, the center has massage facilities, a bookstore, and offers classes in Sanskrit, weekly satsangs, and kirtans, which are spiritual discussions and chanting. Oh, 
This is Melanie, who just did those beautiful poses for us. What are those called? Uh, one was Panchamayarasana, one was Kurmasana, there was Titibasana, Bakasana, to name a few. <laughs> now, how long does someone have to practice yoga before they can do some of these more advanced poses? Um, it depends on the person's body, and it also depends on how much you practice. If you do a six-day week practice like Ashtanga is traditionally, um, it just, again, it depends. It could be a month, it could be more like a year, probably. It could be longer. It just depends on how old you are when you come to it, you know, how strong you are, things like that. What is the difference between Ashtanga yoga and the other yogas? Um, well, some of the things that set Ashtanga part of the particular breathing, the Ujjaya breath that we use, um, also, we use eye focuses called dristis, eye gazes, um, that can be quite different from other classes. It's also very fluid. Um, every single posture, every movement is connected by a breath, an inhale or an exhale. Quite a few of the classes that I have taken have uh, been much slower paced than the Ashtanga that you're teaching, where you'll be resting in between some of the asanas. Mm -hmm. This one is quite a workout, mm -hmm. and you're constantly moving and breathing, and uh, it's quite aerobic. Um, yeah, well, we want to get the internal heat going, the, the fire inside the body. Um, it helps the body become more pliable. It helps release toxins, um, get the sweat out, everything mm -hmm. else that you put bad into your body. Um, and it also wants you to be as strong as you are flexible, prevent injuries, and to balance the whole body, the nervous system, um, the body itself. These are the directors of the Jiva Mukti Center, David and Sharon. For how long has the center been open now? It's been open for a year, almost exactly a year. And for how long have you been practicing yoga? About 20 years. And David? The same. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the importance of yoga, especially now as we're facing the new millennium and the world is undergoing so many changes. Where, where do you see the future of yoga going? Do you see more people starting to practice? Mm, uh, well, definitely. I think that yoga helps to feel people, it, it helps people to feel empowered and uh, able to take action, strong action politically, socially, in their profession, in their relationships. One of the most important things that I found about this particular facility is that you're, it's a good combination of the Hatha yoga and the Bhakti yoga of devotion. Mm. We have neglected um, developing a clear intention about yoga in this country, in this culture. Yoga means union with God. And um, if you don't have that intention clear in your mind when you do these poses, then you're going to end up with something which is um, less than, than satisfying. Yoga should bring you a sense of self-esteem and self-confidence, connection with the inner self beyond personality, beyond limitations of body, and bind. Um, and we, we try to do that. And um, because when, if you can uh, uh, help people to become happy themselves, and then you get a group of people who are happy, then many changes for the good can, can happen. 
There again, like energies attract like energies. As you were saying, um, this facility is a great meeting place for people that are like-minded, that want to better themselves and, uh, you know, can connect with each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, you spoke about the importance of the devotional practices and when people come together uh, with a common purpose, it's called in, in this tradition satsang. It means, uh, it means hanging out for the sake of the truth, the highest truth, not uh, some dogma or some uh, uh, worldly intention, but f for manifesting the truth that, that goes beyond our, our selfish needs. Yoga is union with God, mm -hmm. and the intention of yoga, of course, moksha, liberation. Uh, I know that here you also advocate meditation and perhaps becoming a vegetarian in addition to the devotional practices and the asanas. Um, it all works together, doesn't it? Yes, it all works together. Yoga means union with God, as you stated. And um, that realization that you are one with God, that's the great realization. But how to get there? How to get there? That's, that's the big question. And so yoga gives us a method, not just an intellectual idea that we can agree, agree with or disagree. It gives us a, uh, a method. Um, as Jesus said, and Jesus was a great yogi, he said, if you want to know oneness with God, then do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So I think the, the, the problem, what separates us from that knowledge of oneness with God is otherness. And the practices of yoga address that otherness. Um, when you then start to practice seeing yourself in others, empathy, seeing yourself in a cat, in a dog, in a cow, in a bird, in a rock, uh, in a tree, in um, the person next door, in the cab driver, in, you know, then what happens is you become familiar. You have this empathetic response and feeling with the other person. Love starts to, to come and compassion. And that affects your behavior. That affects how you, you behave towards them and it, be, and it also affects how you start to see yourself. So this um, uh, separation between people starts to break down and you start to feel more closer, more happy, less, less self-conscious, less worried about what are they going to think about me? Am I saying the right thing? Uh, is my hair okay? Am, do I have the right clothes on? You know? And uh, so you become less fearful is really what happens. And that's an amazing experience to lose that that kind of fear. When you can become less fearful, then you're close to becoming happy. And the moksha, the liberation. Moksha, right. moksha. moksha is when you feel happy. That's what liberation is. That You're being liberated from suffering. You're being liberated from sadness, from selfishness, from fear, from low self-esteem, from self-consciousness. Well, in a in a practical way, I think people are seeing the pictures of the asanas, the uh, physical exercises, and they might wonder, well, wh how is that a practical method? Um, the names of many of the asanas are names of of uh, the dog, the turtle, the frog, the mountain, the tree. So you take these shapes, which are said to be the vibrational essence of all the various life forms, but your experience is that through all the different shape-shifting, something stays the same. What you try to feel staying the same is the breath goes in and the breath goes out. The breath goes in and the breath goes out. And what that breath represents is the consciousness that we all share. So you begin to have an actual physical experience of our sameness, the sameness of all the various life forms and not the differences. And when you experience that sameness, when you have an actual transcendental experience away from my small selfish needs, when you begin to feel and experience uh, these so-called others as your own self, then you have the liberation, the oneness, the love. The asanas by themselves are not going to get you there. How do you integrate this into a more all-inclusive program? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. To if the premise of yoga is oneness, that you are one with God or one with the source, one with the universe, um, then you have to know that you're not the body and you're not the mind. You're not the separate self. And um, the part that the yoga asanas play is they allow us an experience of knowing the body inside and out. Um, when you know, when you're that familiar with something and you can watch yourself living in the body, you can detach and watch that happening, you can watch your mind think, then when you have that experience of the watcher, then you know you're not the body and you're not the mind. And you were saying that you have to know the body and the mind inside out right. to know that you're not. Yeah. Well, yeah. there again, yeah. coming from the witness, the witness, wa- yeah, the witness, the witness state, watching right. yourself, doing, doing yourself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> watching yourself, playing. being yourself. Well, playing this personality, right. playing this separate uh, right. personality. So you really are the self in a larger sense, watching the small self struggling in its way to find the bigger self. Yeah. To, go, to go home. To go, to go, to <laughs> home. To go home. Home. Right. Go home. <laughs> right. It has been said that chanting clears the mirror of the heart to reflect what is already within us. Eight o'clock satsang and kirtan with Krishna Das is next. just put a headset on me and I was instantly lit and starting to cry and I was just wow it just hit me right in the soul something very ancient about the uh, the chants that are on here and the Sanskrit of course and it's all the names of God uh, in so many different blessed ways and uh, it's so wonderful that you brought out a CD I'll put a Mike sticker on my next CD, A Cure for PMS. Yes, this is my That'd new PMS great. cure. That's great. It's <laughs> so millions, unbelievable. Absolutely. No, it's good. It's, you're instantly lit. <laughs> so you were over in India? Yeah, I lived in India a long time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, first time I went, I, it was in September 70, I went over to be with uh, Neem Karoli Baba. You know, Ram Dass's guru, the little old man with the blanket. Mm, yes. And um, I stayed for about, just almost under three years I stayed. I, when I left America, I never thought I'd come back. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I did, totally, but... <laughs> right, well, as they say, you leave, uh, you go to the Himalayan mountains, or you go and study with the guru, and then you come back and you chop wood and carry water, as the thing yeah, goes, right. Right. all over again, except from a different place. Yeah. Yeah. So you're still participating <laughs> in the world, but from a different place inside, more as the witness. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the world becomes your teacher, you know. Uh, when you really have, you know, when you involve yourself in spiritual stuff, you have to surrender. You have to see your life as your teacher, and you have to see your life as your guru. And the world is, is a part of that. And so everything that happens to you, you have to accept as teaching. And uh, the more we can do that, you know, the easier, the less we suffer needlessly. I mean, there's always a certain amount of suffering that, due to things that happen that are just, you can't do anything about. But, you know, through me being there and chanting and everything, uh, it's really helped me to uh, get a new perspective on it, you know, mm -hmm. and deepen my surrender towards to life and to everybody, you know. So, so you, you feel that surrender has an awful lot to do with it? Um, ultimately, I know you know, ultimately, you, even when, when you take your last breath, you surrender this body, right. you know. So it's, every day is, is you know, a way of, of surrendering to life. It's not giving up. You know? No. Like Ram Dass used to say, you know, you have to be somebody before you can be nobody. And well, he mm. was actually yeah, he from some. <laughs> exactly. Yes. He's doing okay he's now. He's doing good. Yes? I'm going to see him in a couple of weeks. He's, oh, he's, great. Yeah. He's, he's in a great space. I mean, he was writing a book on aging, and he, and he was having a lot of trouble. And he, he realized that after the stroke that he had, he realized he was having trouble because he was afraid of being. Um, helpless and incapacitated, all the things that happen with age. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, look what happened to him. Wham, bam, he's completely helpless. He's, he, he can't go to the bathroom by himself. He's surrounded. He has to be helped all the time. Well, he had to go, he had to push through that last fear. And he yeah. actually, you know, he said to me, he said, you know, now I, I realize I was afraid of this, and I'm here I am. I'm in it, and here I am. And so he's still okay. He's absolutely You can be fine. in it and be okay. He's in the best space he's ever been in his life. It's really extraordinary. You'll, so, have, you'll have to give us a few Ram Dass stories. Hmm. Uh, the X-rated stories, the R-rated <laughs> stories, or the G-rated stories? All of the above. <laughs> we, we want the real dirt here. <laughs> well, you know, when I met Ram Dass, really, my whole life changed because he had just come back from India. And um, This was your New Hampshire trip, yeah? This is the New Hampshire trip, this, yeah, this back is, in 1960. Eight, I guess. And this is surrendering. It's not destiny or free will. You surrendered into this. Well, or do just, you feel this just, came knocking on your door? You know, at one point, uh, you know, sur uh, the universe comes and gets you. You yeah. know, and it does wake you up every once yeah. in a while. And I was very unhappy, and I didn't know what was going on. Anyway, when I met him, I realized that what I was looking for had actually existed in the world. Mm -hmm. You know. I didn't know what it was, but I, 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 I sensed it, I tasted it, and it, just that changed so much. Mm -hmm. The thing that everybody wants is actually available. Right. It's a, you know, who you knew? caught that first glimpse. Yeah. And then. And so then I obviously I chased him around like a maniac for the next couple of years. I got totally attached to him and. You know, at first I thought it was him, you know, and then he kept beating me with a club and saying, look, it isn't me, it's my guru. So after a couple of years, I went to India and I met the old man. And the old man with the blanket. The old man with the blanket. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was... I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, if there's a source, you know, he's certainly uh, a river, you know. Mm -hmm. And he's just flowing, flowing, flowing. All you have to do is jump in, you know. There's nothing except ourselves holding us back. Well, as, as Ram Das had said, they used to just sit together and just grin, you know. It, it, wordlessly, he would communicate so much just on an energy level. From the inside, yeah. you know, I don't know, you know, I don't even know if energy level describes it. You know, it's just from within you, 
you would just see things and realize things inside yourself about yourself or about life or about stuff that happened and you know and he never appeared to do anything it was all just like you know, hanging out and then all of a sudden like whoa you know and then you'd get it yeah a light bulb would go on in Definitely. your head this is how he always taught you that he mm -hmm. he was is with you all the time with you. you know and but he told you with such a sense of humor and showed you in such a way that you didn't get a feeling like, you know, it's like some superior, you know, he was like right down with you, you know, he was funky, he was right here. And there was a million ways that he showed you, you know, all the time. And after a while you start living in this reality where you realize this guy totally knows everything about you mm -hmm. and he still loves you. That's the weird part, because we're not used to that. Right. He, how could he love me? And every once in a while, like say he wouldn't give you a piece of fruit for a couple of days you know you start to wilt you know you stop sitting so tall and you start to wilt and you start to feel bad about yourself and it gets worse and worse and you're ready to go jump in the river and then all of a sudden boom it hits you with an apple from 20 feet away right you know and then he looks you look up and he goes like uh -huh. this you know and then you're like up like this take it easy see ya. you know so then you're like feeling good about yourself again He's showing you the, he keeps, the roller coaster ride yeah. that's only within yourself. Exactly. And, yeah. and the whole point was that he was there when you were down, when you were up, when you were in, when you were out. But it's only in our own little worlds, our own little minds, and our own little movies Definitely. that we lose it yeah. from time to time. Yeah. Now that you're back here in the States, well, at first, the transition coming back to the States, yeah. did you find that Very you would much. slip in and out of it and you would lose it? Yeah. And, yeah. Totally it's, lost. It's tough, you know? isn't I, it? I would come back. For years, I went back and forth and back and forth, and then I would drag myself back for first aid, you know. For a little shot in the arm, yeah? Emergency treatment. Yeah. Then I come back and I'd be, I'd be high for a while and then mm -hmm. I'd lose it. Right. But after, the more real the stuff got to me, the less I would craft here, mm -hmm. you know. And over years, and really years and years, and some major breakdowns and, you know, getting back together again, all kinds of stuff. You know? Well, the practice you know? is to, yeah. to work it into daily life. Yeah. And certainly the kirtan, the chanting helps. Yeah. Yes. Very I mean, good. I drive my Jeep and I sing along and, you know, when I'm not in my space. Watch your speed. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, it's great. And uh, it definitely, you know, keeps the vibration up. Definitely well, does, yeah. So that's it, the, the uh, greatest hits of the greatest Kali hits. Yuga. What is that, about 26,000 years? Yeah, there's another <laughs> 24,000 to go, but everybody yeah. thinks it's going to end tomorrow. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we don't live there. No, no. No, we'll be fine. We'll make it far into the next millennium, especially with all this uh, great vibration around. Thank Krishna you Das, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Well, that's it for tonight's show. We hope that you've enjoyed it. From all of us here in the Galactic Center, here's to a little heaven on earth. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. For information, make contact with the Galactic Center. Center.